Today's message is first called uh, Christians, part two. Okay, um, I want to ask you: Do people call you Christians at work? Just asking. Do people know that you are Christians? Just asking because when we say they were called first called Christians at Antioch, which was a cosmopolitan city like New York City, it was by non-believers, not out among ourselves, okay? And the word Christian means Christ, Messiah, King, uh, Anointed One, which is a Greek word of Hebrew word Mashiach, right? So, and Christian, which is a Latin ending meaning followers or the party of Christ. Do people know that you are Christians? People call you Christians. Just want to ask you, okay? Just want to ask you. Today, I want us to just have a review of the last two weeks, which is a sign two significant events in history of the church. History of the church. I think it is maybe perhaps even more, impor more important than Reformation. I really think. Okay, that's how important Acts chapter 10 and Acts chapter 11 is. Acts chapter 10 has to do with a story of first Gentile Christian. Okay, what is so significant about that? Well, up to this point, it was all Jews. It was everything was Jews. But first Italian, white person becoming a Christian, officially, and the church recognizing that. That's the story of Cornelius and Peter. And the uh, second chapter, chapter 11, latter half is people being scattered and the first church called Antioch Church was formed in the city of Antioch. Seemingly, they are unrelated stories, but they are very, very closely related stories. First Christian, uh, Gentile Christian, and first Gentile church. And maybe you don't really appreciate the word Gentile. Gentile you, you are Gentiles. I am a Gentile. Everyone outside of... Uh, Jewish nation were called Gentiles. And up to this point, and we weren't part of, the, uh, part of the family or part of the game. First time, okay? So that's uh, what I want to do. I want to just compare and relate the two. And I want to remind you again, this is a historical moment. If you want to understand Christianity, you've got to understand. I really think this is a very important specific time in God's redemptive history that he reveals God revealed father's heart father's heart if you want to know father's heart listen carefully today okay so Acts chapter 10 Peter had a vision by the Holy Spirit he was praying on on the uh, housetop in the city of Joppa okay and he was praying around lunchtime at Simon's rooftop and saw a vision, a large sheet, okay? A large sheet uh, that comes from four corners of the earth. And in it were all kinds of animals and reptiles and creeping things. Now, I was thinking about what are creeping things that probably like included snakes, amphibians, reptiles, okay? All kinds of creepy things all kinds of dirty animals. To Peter, who was a Jew, uh, and for thousands of years, these are animals they, he doesn't associate. But the vision was coming down. Large sheet, full of animals, four legs animals, creeping things, and in it were all kinds of these reptiles, and it was coming down. And basically, uh, Peter was uh, you know, hungry and praying, and the voice of God came, Peter, arise, kill and eat them, okay, which is an incredible uh, thing that he, could, he cannot imagine, imagine to do. So Peter said, no way, I'm not going to do that. I haven't done that. That's not right thing to do according to the law or according to the Old Testament, and that is not right thing to do according to the tradition. I am not going to do that. And then God says something significant. You know what God said? He said, what God has cleaned, do not call unclean, Okay. I want, to ask you, I, want, I want you to take a look at me, okay? Uh, do you compare yourself to snakes? Snakes 
that creeping thing. By historically, instinctively, we hate snakes. There are people who love snakes and take pictures uh, with a huge uh, snakes around their neck and post up on Facebook and things like that. But by nature, deep inside, we don't like snake. You know why? It goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 3, I think. Snake was that sneaky animal representing sin. And you know what? You and I are like snakes, nothing but snakes. If we are full of sin, if we are full of deceit, full of selfishness, <laughs> we're no better than snakes, right? Inside that sheet, it was full of snakes, reptiles, and all kinds of filthy animals, and God cleansed them. God cleansed them, okay? That was the vision, okay? Which is a historical moment. Peter said, no way, I can't do this. I, can't, I cannot break the law. I cannot break the tradition. But to that Peter, God said, what God has made clean, do not call them unclean. Can I just ask you, how did God clean, cleanse those dirty animals? Through the blood of His Son. That's the only way. Okay? Please, on this Father's Day, Father gave up His Son so that reptiles and snakes, amphibians, all kinds of filthy things like myself and you have become clean. Okay? And that is the gospel of Jesus Christ should motivate and compel you to live and to go on with your life. How many of you see, okay, how many of you see uh, that you are like reptiles and snakes? Can you say amen? Can you proudly say amen? Can you say amen? Nobody? That's what the Holy Spirit does. Really does, actually. That's why I'm asking you. Do you know you're like reptiles and snakes? No better than that. Okay? That's what the Holy Spirit does. That's what exactly what Holy Spirit convicts of you. Okay? Sin makes you proud. Spirit humbles you. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Until you begin to see that, it's very difficult to understand grace. That's why I'm asking you this question. And this whole vision is about that. Okay, those, you know, creepy things, creatures. You know, I'm imagining snakes, amphibians, reptiles. <coughs> God made them clean. And how did He do that? Through the blood of His Son. Through the blood and death of His Son, you and I have become clean, right? It is the blood that cleanses. It is the blood that atones. It is the blood that uh, redeems. It was the death on the behalf of those creepy things like yourself and I, okay? I told you this story. H.A. Ironside, uh, Dr. Ironside, was telling this story, and he was telling, uh, speaking about death of his own father, okay? His own father, his name was John. On his deathbed, John, Dr. Ironside's, uh, Ironside's father, keeps saying, large sheet, large sheet coming down, and in it, there are all kinds of animals, and those creeping things, and filthy animals, and, and, and. He keeps saying that. So one of his friends finally just bent down and said to John, who was dying on his deathbed, John, John, Bible says creepy things, creeping things, creeping things, creeping things. And then John Ironside, Dr. Ironside's father says, Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's how I got in. That's how I got in. That's understanding grace, brothers and sisters. That's understanding grace. Okay? That's how I got in. That's the story of Acts chapter 10. First Christian convert, Cornelius, who was a centurion, a soldier, Italian, European, first European convert, okay? Significant person through the vision of Peter. Not really. It wasn't the vision of Peter. It was the vision of God. It's God's will that the gospel do, that, to go forth outside of Jewish nation 
into the world, okay? And that was the breakthrough, the first story of Christian convert in Acts chapter 10. Then the story of Antioch, the church. Uh, oh, I forgot to read. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Let me just give you a little bit of background. It'll help you understand, especially when you try to read uh, New Testament. Okay. This is Roman Empire. Okay. Surrounded by this red dotted line. Okay. And if you notice, this is the Mediterranean Sea. This is Italy, Greece, Turkey, Syria, Lebanon, <coughs> Palestine, Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, and Algeria. If you could uh, just follow what I'm saying. This is Africa, this is Spain, Portugal, and this is Europe, and this is Middle, uh, uh, Turkey and Middle East. And Roman Empire, as you see, it's, it, it encompasses the uh, Mediterranean Sea. It encircles it. The biggest city is Rome and Alexandria and Cyrene, Cyprus, and Antioch. These are the biggest cities, okay? It helps you understand when you read the Bible, if you care to understand it. It's very difficult to understand New Testament without understanding Book of Acts. It really is, actually. That's why you need to try to understand it, okay? It's not very difficult to understand, but so many people go through their entire Christianity without understanding Book of Acts. And very difficult to understand the rest of the book of, of the New Testament. It takes a little bit of effort to understand. And things like this help, okay? And this, there is Rome, and the city of Philippi is here. Athens is here. Corinth is here. And Ephesus is in Turkey, okay? And Antioch is here, okay? Right here. And Palestine is right here. If you follow these, uh, it'll help you understand help you understand. Oh, I forgot to get rid of this. Okay. Stephen Curry, let, let me read it anyway. There are more to me than just this jersey I wear, and that's Christ living inside of me. He's a Christian. Okay, he's a Christian. You know, he's a Christian, and he's not, he's not afraid to declare it. Right? There's more to me than this jersey that I wear, and that Christ lives inside of me. I'm going to skip a few things. I forgot to uh, get rid of this. Okay, Acts chapter 11, okay, the second part of the story, the birth of Antioch church. When they heard these things, they fell silent. This is Jerusalem church. And they glorified God saying, then to the Gentiles also, God has granted repentance that leads to life. Sounds very lame, but finally church is realizing Gentiles are Christians too. Gentiles are are Christians too. And up to this point from Genesis to Acts chapter 10, it was all Jews. It was completely Jews, except few exceptions. Finally, Bible is declaring that God grants repentance that leads to life. Okay? We went to uh, an evangelism last Sunday uh, to Ellie Pond Park, and maybe there were, uh, there were about, how many people did we go? About 20, 20 people we went. And uh, it was a very hot day, but when we went to uh, Ellie Pond Park, it was kind of cool, actually. We set up a booth, okay, with our banner and some tracks and with ice cold water and ice coffee. And then we began to uh, divide it into groups of two and giving out tracks and try to meet people. Such a wonderful time. And I happened to... Uh, just go a group of uh, people, Colombians, family who was having a birthday party, and I ended up sitting with them, talking to them for two hours, actually. Sat there, had their coffee, and it was such an interesting time. I met each member of the family. And at the end, I talked to this sister, okay, ended up talking to her, and she went to a Korean church a few years ago, really hurt, okay? And she came, uh, she, uh, she didn't go to church ever since, and she's, a look, she's looking for a church. And I'm like, what is the chance of that happening? A Colombian lady who went to Korean church a few years ago and sitting here hurt by Korean church, and she, she has all these questions. You know, I'm sharing this because 
Do you share, by the way? Do you share your faith? Do you open your mouth and share about Christ? Here's my argument. If the Spirit of God lives in you, the Bible says he, he will make you witnesses. And I'm not talking about just to non-Christians, but I'm talking about anybody. Okay? Christians and non-Christians. Friends, co-workers, neighbors, any conversation should be leading to the most important thing in your life. The greatest treasure of your life. Do you share? But the question that I really want to ask you is, do you share with someone who's different than you? I'm just asking you, do you share with non-Koreans? If you share, do you have desire to share? Do you share with someone who is uh, very different than you? Okay, whatever that means. You know, what's happening here is Jews consider Gentiles as subhumans, as animals. Now they are sharing Christ to them. Significant change of lifestyle. That's the Spirit of the Lord. That's the Spirit of the Lord. Okay? Now those who are scattered because of the persecution. If you remember, when <coughs> Stephen died, great persecution happened in Jerusalem church, which is the Father Church. I was going to call it Mother Church, but Father's Day. So Father Church. So what happened? People scattered. Terrible thing. Persecution came. Church scattered. Terrible thing, right? See what happened. That arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch. Okay? And Antioch. That's going north all the way to Turkey. Speaking the word of God, no one except Jews. Okay, can you take a look at that verse? Okay. These Christians who are Jewish from Jerusalem and the persecution came and they were scattered because of, uh, of their fear of death. And they were sharing the Christian faith, no one except the Jews. Does that sound positive or does, does that sound negative to you? There's no way to look at this as a positive statement. That's what they did. How about you? Do you sh ever share? Check your heart. Do you have a desire to share? Do you have a desire to share with someone other than your own race? Do Koreans share their faith with any other per people? I'm, I'm not talking about foreign missions for a week or two. I'm talking about every single day. I think this is a pretty significant statement right here. They share to no one except Jews. And then the demarcation, historical moment, but right there, okay? But there were some of them who are those people. We have no idea. We don't know who they are, okay? But what we, we do know is men of Cyprus and men of Cyrene. Cyprus is west of, Tur uh, west of Syria, okay? These are Middle Eastern people, Middle Eastern Jews. Cyrene is current-day Libya, okay, where Gaddafi is from. Christians from Cyrene, the Jewish people who are living in North Africa and Cyprus, they share Christ to the people who are not Jews. Now, this is a significant event, okay? There were, but there were some of them, men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who on the coming of Antioch spoke to Hellenists. Who are the Hellenists? Any non-Christians, any non-Jews. Those, those are the Hellenists, okay? Also, preaching the word of Lord Jesus. And what was the result? Can you take a look at this? And the hand of the Lord was with them. And great number who believed turned to the Lord. Do you want to see this happen in New York City? Does anybody want to see this happen? Could you give me some enthusiastic yes? Could you say amen? amen. Come on, people. If you don't say amen to this, what is wrong with you? What is happening in your heart? You don't want to see this happen? You don't want to see God using this church and you preaching the gospel to those lost people? You do not want to see that? Come on. I'm just, you know, you got to see this.
and the hand of the Lord was upon them, meaning the blessing of the Lord was upon them. And the great number grew, and that became the Antioch church. That's the story, okay? That's the story. What do we know about the city of Antioch, okay? It's the capital of uh, Syrian Judea of Palestine. Do I have a map? Right here. Antioch, right here, Syria, Cyprus, and this is Palestine, and this is Lebanon, right here, and this is Turkey, Asia Minor, this is Greece, and this is Rome, this is Italy, and this is North Africa, Cy Cyrene is right here, do you see that? Alexandria, the biggest city in the Roman Empire, Alexandria in Egypt, and Cyrene in Libya, and Rome, okay? Those are the biggest cities, and Antioch being third largest city in the entire Roman Empire. Can you picture with me? What would be the biggest cities in the world right now? Tokyo, Hong Kong, Taipei, London, probably New York is one of them. New York is one of them. It's very similar to Antioch. Okay? Who do you think was living in Antioch? Who? Do you think was living in Antioch? Antioch was the city of commerce and culture. Obviously, it's the, it's the city that connects the west with the east. It's the city that connects the south with the north. Okay? It was the city of commerce and culture, connecting the east and west, of great learning, highly mixed with Greek, Greece, and Rome, and Jewish, oops, Okay, Jewish, and then Persian, and then Arab. It's the entire Shmogosboga. It's just the mixture of people. Can you, can you picture that? Doesn't it sound like New York City, right? Entire mix of West and East. You happen to live in a place like that. Do you think that's a non-significant thing? Antioch was the, a place of learning, highly mixed, and all kinds of idolatry, especially of prostitution, sexual immorality related to pagan worship. And uh, this is the people, uh, uh, people were gathered in this city. Who was living in this city? Probably Europeans, Romans, white people, don't you think? What about from uh, Syria, Cyprus, and Palestine, Middle Eastern people? Right? What about from north? Okay? All these Europeans people living in Antioch. And probably from Cyrene and Alexandria, African people, Middle Eastern people, and Persian people. And perhaps from India and Pakistan and Asia, some Asian people. That's the city of Antioch. Does that, does that sound like New York City? It absolutely does. We are living in a city that looks like Antioch. Did you know that? And do you share with any other people other than Koreans? If you share. No, I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. You think God placed Koreans here, Asians here, so that we could, we could become rich and doctors and lawyers? Is that why God placed us here, you think? You think that's the size and capacity of who God is? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I just pray that you will come out of that. Understand, begin to understand what God is doing. Until you come out of that, you're going to live and probably finish your life in that bubble and suffocate. And I really want to share this with you. Okay? Okay. So Antioch was a cosmopolitan city, a great multi-ethnicity and culture, and believers were called Christian, which is a made up of Christ and, and, and the followers of Christ. Now in that city, in that kind of mixed world, Christians were, uh, the disciples were called Christians first. That's why I'm asking you, do people know that you're Christian? Do people call you that you're a Christian. How many of you, seriously, you don't have to say amen if you don't, want to know, uh, want other people to know that you are followers of Christ? Could you say amen if you do? 
I don't know about you, that's what I want. That he is the greatest treasure. He's the Messiah. He's, he's Christ. I want people to know. Not by saying this all the time, but my lifestyle and concerns and things like that. I don't know about you, okay? Church preaching uh, only to the Jews, to preaching to everyone else. Could you pause for a second? Do you identify with this group or do you identify with the other group? Let me ask you. Let me ask that again. Church that only preached to the Jews, only to the Jews, but some of them were brave enough and break the tradition following the leading of the Spirit, and they preach to all the Hellenists, all the Americans. Which group do you, do you belong to? Which group should you belong to? You make up your mind. Which group do you think that God is leading, leading you to be? I want you to think about this question. Okay? I want you to pause and think about this. Because this, I don't know about you, but this really excites me. I want to write about this, this particular area. I want to write. And really tell the churches. Because I don't think we are doing this right now. Most of the churches are doing this right now. Don't you think? I don't think that's our calling. Perhaps we are moving into verse 20 right now. Okay? Maybe I'm part of the Jerusalem church person. But we need to raise up Antioch Church, if you follow what I'm saying. Who's going to be part of the Antioch Church? The brave ones, obedient ones, right? So let me give you some thoughts from these two accounts. Story of first Christian and story of the first church, okay? Some thoughts. Let's say Jerusalem Church is the mother church or father church, Father's Day, okay? And Antioch Church is what then? Daughter church or son church, child church. Jerusalem church was certainly overseen through the leadership of apostles and leaders, and that's how Antioch church was formed. I think it was important that the father church or mother church see what's happening, see the vision first and clearly. Okay? If Korean church wants to uh, carry out the purpose of God, we need to see the vision first. I think we need to see it. Just as Peter saw it. God has shown the vision to Peter first and spoken to him. Rise! Kill and eat it! No, 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 no. I can't do that. I can't do that. And God said, what God made clean, don't call, don't call it impure. In other words, Jerusalem church clearly saw this first. Do you see it? And I want to ask you, do you see it? How many of you see it? Can you say amen? I hope you see it. Okay? First church, Father Church, Jerusalem Church had to see this vision, and God clearly made it, made it clear to them. Jerusalem Church, the Father Church, kind of saw it happening, and later sent Barnabas so to oversee and help, uh, help this church at Antioch to grow. Second thing I want to share is Antioch Church, New York City Church, Antioch Church, which is the main church for the rest of the book of Acts. Very important church. There are only two churches, uh, and then there are other churches, but a Jerusalem Church and Antioch Church. One is Father Church, and the other one is like a daughter church. Very important church. What's the makeup or location? Antioch was a great city cosmopolitan city and we are living in one right now cosmo the universe politan city cosmopolitan city what was the makeup jews and gentiles that was the makeup uh, makeup of antioch church huge jewish diaspora immigrants living in that city that's you that's me are you listening are you listening Do you ever wonder why you're living in America? 
Do you ever wonder why you're living in New York City? What's the makeup? Mix of East and West. I already shared. Probably Africans from Cyrene, from Alexandria, Africans, North Africans, in the city of Antioch. Romans, Greek, white people, right? Caucasian. Cyrene, or Syrians, or Middle Eastern people. All the Middle Eastern people. And then there were uh, perhaps people from India and even from Asia, Asian people. It was all well mixed. That's New York City. That's London, okay? I'm reading about London. I'm heading out to London in about a month, less than a month. I read this article. There are about 3,000 ex-ISIS soldiers living in London right now. 3,000 ex-ISIS soldiers who fought in an actual battle now living in London right now. Okay? The London just kind of opened up. Western Europe just kind of opened up to Muslim. Okay? And it's full of Muslim. Okay? In other words, it's a great mission field. Great mission field. And New York City and West Coast of, of America is becoming like that. That's where you work. That's where you try to make a living. That's where you do business. And your classmates, your co-workers are uh, people like that. Coincidence? I don't think so. I don't think so. I hope you begin to see this. Come out of that little bubble that you've been living all these years, right? I got to do this. I got to go to Hagwan, this college, this job, this income, this house, this location. That's a bubble. How about wherever spirit leads you? That you be obedient unto him. Right? This church was led by Barnabas and Paul. Who are these people? Immigrants. Okay? From Cyprus and from Tarsus. These are immigrants. These are second generation leaders, third generation leaders. Did you know that? You don't think that's important? Barnabas was from Cyprus. He's not from Jerusalem. Paul was from minor, uh, Asia Minor, Turkey. He was a, a Jew. A, he was a Pharisee. Nevertheless, he was Hellenistic and had a Roman, Roman, Roman citizenship. Do you hear it? Okay. Radically changed by grace and Holy Spirit. And that's the story of Paul. And they team up led the uh, volatile church known as Antioch Church, and that became the city, okay? That's the, that's the church that led, led the way for the rest of the book of Acts. You don't think that's important? Come on, people. Third, while this is happening, hand of God was upon it. God blessed it. In other words, this was the will of God, Okay? Do you remember in Jerusalem, Holy Spirit came, church grew, and then the persecution came. Who allowed that? God did. Church scattered all over the place. That's what happened to Korean churches, not only to New York. People are scattered all over the places right now. Terrible thing. But through that persecution, uh, persecution and scattering, the Antioch church was born. Okay? For the rest of the story, Antioch Church is primarily uh, made up of diaspora, immigrant Jews of the Roman Empire, including Barnabas and Paul. But more importantly, those unknown, brave, unnamed, Hellenistic Jewish Christians from Cyrene and Cyprus, and they share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do you hear it? I pray that you will wake up. Lastly, I think about this question, and with this I'm done. If you could just listen. What is God up to? What is God up to? Do you care? What is God up to? Today's Father's Day. I think a sign of maturity, in my understanding, is you understand, you begin to understand the Father's heart. That's a sign of maturity. Until... I don't know, whenever, the friends are most important people in your life, 
right? In my college years, I didn't care about my family. I didn't care about my mother and father. I, they work hard. They provide. They make a living. But most important people in my life were friends, whatever that was. Right? I didn't really care. Right? I, didn't, I hated their tansori. I hated their nagging. I hated everything. Until I got married, I was just so cocky and arrogant. Don't try to teach me anything like some of you right now. Right? Don't try to, don't even try. I don't need to hear it. But at some point, I began to understand and began to have compassion toward my father. He passed away young. He was 54 years old. I'm 54 right now. Some of your father passed away young. But even to this day, I remember him. Even to this day, I remember what he shared with me. Okay. You know what he said? A couple things I shared over the years. He used to tell me, Paul, you reap what you sow. He always told me, you're going to reap what you sow. I know that. I know that. That's a biblical truth. The second thing he taught me, never fight against the church leader. You get on your knees and pray. He always taught me. I think those are wisdom. I'm sharing this with you on this Father's Day because may you understand the heart of the Father. May you understand the heart of the Father. That's when you begin to mature. That's when you begin to mature. My argument is, can you understand someone else's heart and care about other people's heart without understanding and caring about your own father? I would argue, no. Very difficult. What is father up to? I hope you care. Do you think God is moving, leading the history right now? A little bit more than your own life, right? 80 years. Do you think God is doing, leading his history? What is God up to right now? I hope you care. Peter concluded with the Jerusalem church. Can anyone withhold what God is doing? Second question is, who am I that I could stand in God's way? Okay, who am I that I could stand in God's way? Let's pray.